This is the team from Scale Computing. And uh, we've got not one, but two fantastic speakers that are going to be coming on in for, oh, sorry, who are coming on in for you all. Uh, so we've got Taylor Lake, who is the Senior Product Manager, and Chris Scholes, who is the Director of Product Marketing. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to kick things over here to Chris to do a quick intro. And then uh, uh, both Chris and Taylor are going to be presenting. Again, I will be uh, able to pitch any of your awesome audience questions and queries to the duo here at the end of their presentation. Uh, so keep those questions coming in hot. Uh, again, mindful, insightful questions can win your best, uh, best question gift card perhaps at the end of the day. So with that, uh, okay, Taylor, Chris, I'm going to kick things over to you and welcome to the stage, you guys. Well, thanks for that introduction, Mackenzie, and welcome to our session today. My name is Chris Schultz and I'm the Director of Product Marketing with Scale Computing and I am joined by Taylor Lake, who is one of our Senior Product Managers. And we're going to give you a little peek at some of the technologies we've engineered to simplify IT and create efficiencies. So who are we? Scale Computing has been around since 2008 but we really launched our HCI solution in 2012. Many of our first customers were small and quite frankly, typically didn't have a ton of IT expertise. They needed something that was highly available, easy to set up, easy to use and easy to run. And then we started getting pulled into larger organizations with hundreds or even thousands of sites. And the reason was pretty simple they generally have no one in IT at all in these distributed locations. So fast forward to why we're talking today. So this snapshot view shows the technology components within Scale Computing Platform, which provides the infrastructure foundation on which you can run your applications. Hypercore software for virtualization, servers, storage, and backup disaster recovery with powerful fleet manager, to deliver a single manageable solution for our customers and partners. In fact, one of our customers, Resorts from Las Vegas, told us um, at our event there in April, it's very difficult to build software that's easy. I'm gonna talk a bit about some of the technologies that underpin Hypercore on the left, and Taylor will jump in in a bit to cover Fleet Manager on the right in just a few minutes. And we all know your environments can be complex, they get dirty, things fail, and it takes time to identify the problems and troubleshoot. Now our tagline is simplicity engineered and we pride ourselves on developing simple solutions to complex problems. And by that we don't mean that the solution we offer itself is simple, but that we make it simple for organizations to use. And it takes something special and our something special is the da, 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 Autonomous Infrastructure Management Engine, or AIM. And fair warning, I'm going to be all about the acronyms, acronyms today. So AIM is a sophisticated artificial intelligence engine that empowers organizations with automated efficiency, proactive security measures, and streamlined maintenance protocols. It's a hand-built model of the environment the cluster is running in, built in such a way that thinks about the state the system is in. Think of it as a digital twin where it's modeling the reality that the cluster is sitting in, including what's happening on the hardware in the cluster, but also the surrounding environment. So AIM is what allows Hypercore to handle the day-to-day -day operational administrative tasks and maintenance automatically, monitors the system for security, hardware and software errors, and remediates those errors where possible. It identifies the root cause and minimizes the impact of those issues when it cannot repair them automatically. Notifying the user with specific problem determination and action versus just sending a stream of data that then has to be interpreted by someone. And this includes actions to secure the environment. It also maintains current firmware, driver, and OS versions for security and stability purposes. And by leveraging its understanding of the system's state and conditions, AIM automates the remediation tasks and swiftly addresses issues to minimize downtime, which of course is a huge time suck. 
And this diagram is really a bit upside down, but starting at the bottom with collectors, that's exactly what they are. It's a simple methodology that gathers the data to report system information. And moving up to ensure the data can be trusted, we use carefully controlled variables called checked values. Underpinning AIM is the compartmentalized data layer. As the old adage goes, garbage in, garbage out. If we are going to trust AIM to take action to repair problems on the cluster, we have to know that it's going to make good decisions. And this can only happen if we can trust the data it uses to make those decisions. So check values are self-monitoring and recognize when they contain bad or old data. Reading bad data is disallowed, and the conditions and state machines that rely on that data know the data can't be used. So this prevents taking actions on the cluster that could be harmful due to any bad or stale data. And then below the sophisticated intelligence of the state machines, or on top here, there is another simpler but essential layer of intelligence called conditions. And conditions are Boolean flags that indicate problem areas, making it simple for the state machine to understand the problem and enact fixes, or an administrator when the solution requires human intervention. A concise list of problems leads to understanding the root cause quickly, and conditions often indicate what actions are required to return the cluster to a healthy state. As I've mentioned a couple times in passing already, the core intelligence in the system is a hierarchical finite state machine. AIM state machine constantly monitors and models the reality the cluster is currently operating in, and then using that model, AIM can trigger appropriate actions. In addition to the hardware and software, AIM's model of reality includes the physical environments, temperature, power, cabling, and the logical environment, networking, and external services. Given its extensive understanding of the environment, AIM can take many actions to maximize performance and efficiency. And the state machine model itself includes the, <clears throat> excuse me, encodes the knowledge of over a decade of experience running tens of thousands of clusters in the field and improves that model release after release. It can model an astronomical number of possible states and take appropriate actions from any of those. The AIM state machines and Scribe, or the scale computing reliable independent block engine, work together to eliminate much of the management and intervention that our customers have seen with alternatives. Scribe has a unique architecture. Its integration runs parallel to the hypervisor. Instead of running inside a virtual machine as a VSA or a controller VM, and treats all storage in the cluster as a single logical pool for management and scalability purposes. It allows direct data flows to benefit from zero copy shared memory performance and avoids performance issues like disk partition alignment and IO intensive VM snapshot operations. So what does this do for you? You become more efficient with less stuff to monitor or fix. It eliminates complexity and performance overhead of remote storage protocols. Intelligent block distribution across the cluster maximizes data availability and performance. Disk partition alignment issues become obsolete. And it eliminates performance killing issues with traditional storage solutions. And going a bit deeper still, Hypercore nodes with both flash and spinning storage allow even more capabilities in the scribe storage architecture. Tiered nodes use Hypercore Enhanced Automated Tiering, or HEAT, and this is the last acronym I'm going to use, I swear. HEAT includes configurable flash priority allocation at the individual virtual disk level through an easy-to-use slide bar in the Hypercore UI, which you can see here on the right. HEAT sets data block priority by assessing the historical I.O. information on each virtual disk, establishing a block I.O. heat map, and metering real-time IOPS for each virtual disk to achieve efficiency that you need across virtual disks and VMs. And HEAT-capable clusters will automatically assign all new writes to the flash tier until Scribe is able to accurately assess their activity. So in theory, a tiered hypercore cluster with low storage utilization could be running completely on flash storage. So these are just some of the technologies that we've been using for over a decade. I'm now going to turn things over to Taylor to talk about where the real magic happens with the latest developments of Fleet Manager. Taylor, take it away. 
Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I get to talk about Fleet Manager. So as Chris mentioned, all of the intelligence that's been baked into the skill computing platform um, on each node, it's very efficient, low resource, and that's running at the edge autonomously. But as you get into multiple clusters, hundreds, thousands, uh, even the simplicity of a scale cluster still benefits from a centralized monitoring and management view. Um, obviously, there are a plethora of those tools, but Fleet Manager is built by Scale Computing to remotely monitor and manage scale computing clusters, uh, which is really important because Scale has a unique and a uniquely simple way of offering high availability workloads. And Fleet Manager is, is built in complete alignment with that. So obviously you get the things you would expect from an RMM, you get dashboards, you get drill downs into clusters, nodes, VMs. And you can see here in the top, a slice of the dashboard. And again, our dashboard, instead of just like throwing data at you and making you sort it out, it's already pretty much refined into a package of, okay, do I need to do anything or not? So you can see the health status is the dominant thing. And those are based off of the conditions that AIM is going to set and usually remediate itself. But if there is a condition that requires action, that will be set here with a severity and a clear message and says, here's what you need to do to remediate. So that instead of you know judging for yourself, spending time managing, you really just spend time when intervention is required. Uh, and this lets you know that really quickly. On the right, and I know Chris talked about this already, um, I'll touch on it again later, but one of the, the secret sauces of scale is, you know, it's hyper-converged and we've been doing hyper-converged for a long time. Uh, and as part of that, we've been offering one-click upgrades. And that includes not just the hypervisor, but also the storage layer and AIM, every component, critical BIOS updates are all being triggered with high availability for the workloads on that cluster um, right from Fleet Manager. So super, super simple, clean. And I'm going to talk through a couple of the specific features that I thought were, were definitely worth calling out um, when you think of uh, the simplicity of the solution. First up, the zero touch provisioning. Uh, zero touch provisioning is something that has been picking up steam lately, which is great because it's the right way to do things. Um, offering with Fleet Manager. Uh, if you're not familiar with zero touch provisioning, obviously, you know, okay, we're dealing with physical hardware here. Things still need to be cabled together. They need power, internet. But with zero touch, what you can do is you can log into Fleet Manager, which is a cloud hosted portal, you know, no setup required. Uh, we just send you an email and you log in and you're, you're good to go. Even your assets that you've purchased from scale are already there. There's no need to manually register the nodes. You just hop in and you set, these are the LAN IPs I need. This is the LAN gateway for the site that I'm installing it at. And you hit create. And now we store the settings that you've configured in advance for your cluster. So you can be, you know, Chris was mentioning hundreds of sites and really you've got a small team, a small IT team. It's a, I don't know how big your IT team is, but it's always too small, right? So you can centrally configure everything with the person who knows best what those settings need to be so that that's stored at Fleet Manager. And what you are then doing is you're shipping out the clusters, the nodes. A lot of people stage them, so they're already even cabled. And so all somebody has to do is basically plug it into the wall once it arrives on site, whether the site is a manufacturing facility or a retail store or uh, an office branch. All they have to do is connect it. And when it connects, it is hard coded. Again, this speaks to the integration of Fleet Manager with Hypercore that makes a complete platform. Um, it reaches out, grabs down the configuration that you set so that nobody on site is bringing a monitor or a keyboard or having to do anything that they could, you know, potentially mess up or have to be trained on. And it's going to provision itself and show up for you in Fleet Manager, and you are ready to go. 
one of the goals for the project was to make it so easy that a literal baby could do it. That's my son, but he cannot do it. He can only uh, attempt to break the cluster. Uh, but a lot of environments at the edge are as dangerous as if a baby was perilously close to them. Instead, we, uh, we have enlisted store managers as young as second graders to handle the deployment. Um, you can actually watch the video. Um, this is not my son, but a very capable store manager can accomplish the task of plugging in the power in the internet. And that truly is all you need in order to get HA at remote sites with zero touch. So once you've done that deployment, you've, you've really simplified it as much as humanly possible. Now it's reporting into Fleet Manager. So what does that mean for you? Um, obviously, it aggregates the health, like I mentioned on the dashboard. It aggregates firmware management. But you also get things like a VM list. So now not only do you have 100 clusters, which each cluster is composed of multiple nodes all being aggregated, but now Fleet Manager can perform another layer of aggregation. And you can see all your VMs across any number of clusters, search and sort, see things that are underutilized, overutilized, and you can hop directly to the VM console from Fleet Manager with a single click. And that's utilizing our SecureLink technology. SecureLink is the remote access solution that comes integrated with Fleet Manager, at no additional cost. Um, obviously, there's, again, a lot of remote access tools um, but we're proud of SecureLink because obviously it improves your productivity because you now don't need to set up a remote access solution on each of your hosts. You don't need to maintain it. You don't need to pay for it if you're using a paid solution. And it's really secure because it's baked in and it uses uh, all the, the crypto cryptography that's already being used to get like the monitoring metrics. Um, so there's it minimizes the risk of misconfiguration. So as I mentioned, when you're dealing with remote sites, you need a remote access solution. You know, some customers do have one that they really love and they stick with. But as this, you know, hopefully elaborates the point, VPNs and remote desktops are tried and true. They're, but they're not simple. You know, there are a lot of steps to implementing them. Um, a lot of customers, you know, if they are a managed service provider, they might have a VPN set up at their customer site exclusively so that they can access uh, the cluster that they have on site um, when they need to. And so with SecureLink, now that they can do away with that, um, they can do away with that, not just at one site, but you know the dozens of sites that they are responsible for rarely having to get remote access to. And with SecureLink, you just log into Fleet Manager, find the cluster you want to access, and you're in. I mentioned I'd be bringing up rolling upgrades again. So this is one of the things that is kind of at the core of scale is not only is it really simple, but that simplicity is aiding you in staying secure, staying up to date with all the latest patches, updates, again, at every layer of your hyperconverged cluster, not just the hypervisor, not just the storage layer. Um, and we're doing that with HA baked in, no additional cost. So you're getting your VMs live migrated during the upgrade, you know, if they even need to, we do have non-rolling upgrades as well. And so it rolls, node updates, VMs migrate back. You and the users of your applications see nothing. And you can monitor all of that from Fleet Manager. And speaking of newer things, uh, we are just releasing Fleet Metrics so that you can review years of CPU, RAM, and storage metrics, both at the cluster level, down to the node or host, and even down to the VM level. So as I mentioned, this is not for day-to-day. -day. Like You're not going to have to look at this every day. But when you do have an issue, it's super helpful to be able to dive in to the details. And scale makes that simple as well, so that you can ensure that workloads are balanced across hosts and even maybe across clusters. Um, if that's your scenario. And then, of course, it also makes it really easy to know when you might need to add more resources, which is, again, something that a hyperconverged solution like Scale makes really simple. You can just bolt on another node to your cluster. Again, no downtime. 
and enjoy those resources, as well as using these metrics to plan for uh, the inevitable hardware refresh. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Chris to close us out and share uh, a little customer success story. Awesome. Thank you, Taylor. I really just wanted to close on a couple of things. If you think about needing high efficiency and reliability, consider, if you will, a police department where, as Tim Branham at Kingston Police says, it really it can be literally a life and death situation. Um, this is probably one of my favorite quotes ever, that the system is so easy to manage and foolproof that we don't log into the console often enough and can never remember the password. I just I just love him. Um, we kind of flew through a ton of things in a short amount of time. So if you want to know more, I encourage you all to visit the website for more information or click any of the links here to the technologies that we've talked about or to get an even deeper still view of how Scale Computing Platform operates. We have a link to our Theory of Operations white paper here and the data sheet attached uh, on the right to this session. And Mackenzie, I don't know if we're out of time or if we have time for Q&A, but I thank you and everyone for your time today. All right. No, we definitely have some time for Q&A, so uh, let's, let's do that. I'm going to quickly throw up a poll. Uh, so if any of you are looking for some additional information, data sheets, white papers, case studies, pricing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that's there. And the, the scale team can hand that over to you right after the webinar today. Uh, but with that, yeah, let's dive into some questions. We actually have a ton of questions, so people are are pretty excited over here, and we'll see how many we can get through. So you can either kind of both answer or kind of pick one and take it as you see fit, depending on you know where it lands. Uh, but first question I've got is, uh, what setup is required to run Fleet Manager or register nodes to it? Yeah, I can take that. Um, so I, I blew past it at the beginning, but one of the things that we set out to do with Fleet Manager is to make a solution that only solves problems and didn't create them. So a lot of our RMMs, well, really useful, um, and even other you know hyperconverged solutions, they offer you know some sort of management plane, um, but that might need to be self-hosted or at the very least requires a decent amount of configuration to get the host um, reporting back. And with our solution, because you know it's all scale all the way down, it literally is just out of the box. We ship it to you, and when you log in, your hardware is already in there, uh, ready for your use. Excellent. Um, I've got a few different questions around like what operating systems are supported, uh, if you guys can shed light on that. Yeah, I don't have a list off the top of my head. We do have that information, um, so we might follow up on that. I okay. do no know that we pride ourselves on, you know, we don't have to. <laughs> the reason I don't know the answer is because I don't get the question very much because they tend to work. Okay, um, okay. So, so most, most, most one. <laughs> Linux, most, any popular Linux distros, and even some unpopular distros. Okay, perfect. So yeah, if, if you're if you're on an uncommon operating system, reach out, but I'm sure most most use cases you're pretty much covered. Okay, next question I've got here is how does AIM's AI driven automation enhance the efficiency of managing IT infrastructure compared to traditional management methods? I can take that one. Um, AIM automates routine tasks like resource allocation, system updates, and fault detection. So it reduces the need for manual intervention from traditional methods. The AI algorithms can analyze vast amounts of data to optimize system performance and predict potential issues before they occur. So that leads to the increased efficiency and reduced downtime. All right, excellent. I know uh, AI has been a, a big buzz yeah. around uh, the industry, but I mean, I think we we kind of have to be implementing it now. You know, with the amount of data that's out there, it only makes sense. So it's excited, uh, exciting rather to to know about this. I've got another question about AIM. Um, sure. 
she's asking here, can you provide examples of predictive analytics in AIM and how they help prevent potential system failures? Sure. So AIM monitors the system health and performance continuously. So it can analyze trends in CPU usage, disk IO, network traffic, and it'll identify the patterns that might indicate an impending hardware failure or resource bottleneck. Um, by predicting these issues, AIM can trigger preemptive actions. It'll rebalance workloads or initiate maintenance procedures to prevent those system failures and maintain optimal performance. All right, excellent. I love this. I love this. Okay, next question <laughs> I've got here <laughs> is, can nodes be added and removed to an existing cluster with ZTP? Yeah, that's actually coming. That is a peek into the roadmap is ZTP, you know, simplifies the initial standup. Um, and currently you can add or remove nodes simply uh, with a few command line interactions. Um, and in the future, we are working on bringing that up into Fleet Manager so that it is literally a click of the button. And of course, the old, the plugging in the physical connections and you're off just like CTP today. Okay, okay, excellent. Um, we, there's so many questions that I, I missed this one, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing from what I remember. Someone is basically asking if they've got a bunch of VMs now can scale essentially replace that and let them run just on scale. VMs on a different vendor? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like I, I, they didn't specify from where they're operating. So that could, it could be anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, have, we have a couple tools available at scale computing migrate, um, kind of a recyclable procedure to like, if you've got a bunch of VMs that you need to move over, um, and we have scale computing move. So depending on how many, how, how much downtime you can afford, you can, choose either or, uh, but we also have services that can help migrate to scale. Okay, okay, perfect, awesome. Well, we are pushing up against time, but any um, kind of one of two things or both, uh, if people are looking to get started, they wanna take some first steps, where should they go, what should they do? And also, is there any kind of final, you know, call to action or nugget of wisdom that you'd like to leave the audience with today? Actually, Mackenzie, I would. There's a question in here, how many administrators are needed to control these systems? The beauty of this platform is we have customers and partners with one or two administrators. And actually one customer that I talked to quite recently, he came to our event and he said, my CFO is running our infrastructure in my absence. If the CFO wow. can do it and a 10 year old can do it, <laughs> Then, then, then pretty much anyone can do it. Yep. Simplicity and ease of use. That's our mantra. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I, I do expect, you know, some, sorry, I thought, I thought I got dropped off here a second. I was going to say, we, we, we got to get some like 14 year olds who are legally <laughs> able to work, but just like a squad of like incredible scale computing uh, technicians going out there. <laughs> that was when I had my first part-time job, right? That was our VP's 10 year old son. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> and um, Taylor, anything you want to add before we wrap things here? No, I think I, Chris made a great point of it. Awesome. Perfect. It's simple you. so that you can do things that are more complicated. You know, uh, I mean, nobody wants to be updating their, their cluster. Yeah. You know? No, no. You guys, you've got something great here. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for being on the Megacast today. And with that, I'm going to, I'm going to let you both go. Thanks again. Thanks for having us. Thank